Here at Rural Roads University, we acknowledge that our university is located on the traditional lands of the Kwisepsum and Lekwungen ancestors and families. It's with great gratitude that we now learn and work here for the past, present, and future scopes of Indigenous and non-Indigenous faculty, students, and staff come together. We are here today to talk about our School of Leadership Studies. We have a whole suite of programs that are offered within this school, and I am so thrilled to have Dr. Katherine Mansky, the school director, here with us to help us explore all these different offerings. Hi, Katherine. So happy to have you here. <laughs> My name is Selena Kunar. I'm an education specialist here at Rural Roads University, and I'm here to help uh, participate in today's discussion and navigate us through some uh, best things to know about RU. So why don't we jump into that? So let's head to the next slide. This is a quick overview of how we're going to spend our time together today. So you've learned just a smidge about who we are and we would love to learn so much more about all of you. So if you feel comfortable, let's test out that chat box. Again, head to that black bar, click the chat box icon and it should appear. Let us know, where in the world are you joining us from today? Perhaps what sector are you working in? And if you're coming into today's webinar with any questions, feel free to pop them in that chat box. After we get to know each other a little bit better, we're gonna cruise through an exploration of the RRU experience. Of course, talk about the School of Leadership Studies and touch on all of the programs within it. Cap off with some conversation around admission and application requirements, and then leave time for questions and conversations as well. So before we move on, I'm just gonna pop into the chat box. I see we have some folks sharing where in the world they're joining us from. We are so uh, so thrilled and thankful to have Rhonda White and Alana McConaughey joining us from our enrollment teams. They are here in the chat box to help answer any questions that come up and will be your contacts for answering any questions post webinar as well. So thanks so much for being here. We have Emily from Spruce Grove, Alberta from the municipal government sector, Cinda from Ottawa, Ontario, Audrey, Calgary, Alberta, Kristen from Audrey, Alberta, working with a municipality for community development and looking forward to connecting. Virginia from Ontario, Andre from Ottawa as well, Kara, Maple Creek, Saskatchewan, Catherine, of course, Beth from Surrey. Oh, wow. Well, please, let's keep those uh, introductions coming in. We are nationwide today and I'm sure we have folks joining us live and who will be watching the recording from all across the world as well. So a big, big welcome to all of you. So let's head to the next slide and talk a little bit about Roll Roads quickly. We are always excited to share the power of our place. So on the next slide here, we have just a quick snapshot of what our campus looks like. We're so lucky to be located here in Victoria, BC, uh, where the climate is quite mild. So these photos do a good job depicting what our campus looks like most of the time. Uh, we are a very special space, and some things that we're really proud of here at Rural Roads are things like, our profs know your name. Here, our professors become your peers, which allows our classes to become think tanks and learning really becomes a way of life on our campus. You'll quickly learn that here at Rural Roads, we're not about you know, one-sided lectures or serious note-taking. All of our programs jump right into exploring theories and perspectives as one. Here, being that learning is a way of life, your learning is truly based on your life. So being a university for working professionals means that our students are bringing real world challenges from their workplace into our classrooms. And we're all do we are doing real world problem solving in real time. Um, we're really excited about our classroom space because not only do we have our faculty um, who are scholar practitioners, so folks who are not only out in the world putting into practice what they teach in our classrooms, 
but most of our programs subscribe to this cohort learning model. So that means you are alongside classmates from the very start of your program all the way to the end. And these folks are intentionally put together to ensure our classrooms have a great diversity in uniqueness in types of backgrounds, perspectives, experiences, to ensure that in this program, you will have opportunities to have your perspectives um, honored and challenged all at the same time. Rural Roads is a university that pioneered this blended learning model. And we're gonna learn more about that in a few slides. But what that means is we understood that the power of our education really should transcend this location. So at Rural Roads, our blended programs combine the best in online learning experience with on-campus short intensives to ensure that we're able to come together on this beautiful space as well. So with that, let's head to the next slide and jump into talking about our programs themselves. So I will pass it over to Dr. Catherine Domanski. Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Selena. Uh, as Selena said, I have the privilege of serving as the director of the School of Leadership Studies. So today, um, actually, if you could just bounce back to that previous slide, today I'll be talking about the range of programs, the suite of programs that we have in the school. Uh, and then for each program, there is a program head who works with me, with the students, with the staff, and with, uh, with our uh, team of colleagues on the line today. And everyone uh, works together to deliver these programs, but the program head becomes your focal point or your contact person, your contact faculty person in the school. So I'll speak on everyone's behalf. And then if you have follow-up questions about a very specific program, either Rhonda or someone else on this line will direct you to the specific program head. Uh, so as you can see from this honeycomb configuration here, we have a range of different programs. We have uh, the, most, the most popular program that has been running for over 25 years that many, many people know about is our multi-sectoral leadership programs. And so they, they attract a wide range of people uh, with some leadership experience who are looking to develop their leadership, as I'll say a bit more about in a few moments time. But we also have, and I think this might relate to some of the backgrounds I'm seeing on, on the line here, just based on your brief introductions in the chat room, we have a range of specializations. So there's a health specialization. There's a global specialization. And there's also an executive leadership specialization for those who are in mid to senior level leadership positions within their organizations. So as I'm telling you a little bit about these various uh, degrees that we have on offer, you might think to yourself, do I want something that is more specialized, more targeted to my area of focus? Or am I looking for a broad experience with a range of diverse leaders in different sectors, different age groups, different professional experiences, and different kinds of leadership experience? So keep that, keep that question or that general framing in mind as as we move forward. And uh, before I get into the, the, the nuts and bolts, the details of each program, I'd also like to take a moment to say that at Royal Roads University, we have truly been endeavoring to honor the calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission and various other reports that have uh, been published in the last number of years. And, and it's incumbent upon us as leaders in this time to really take seriously this, this effort toward reconciliation, decolonization, and so on. And you'll find that that content is now interwoven with, you know, throughout our curriculum in a way that even 10 years ago it wasn't. And so just as Selena acknowledged that Royal Roads University uh, rests on the ancestral lands of the Lekwungen and the Kosapsen families and ancestors, uh, and, and has been a gathering place since time immemorial and continues to be this learning environment, this gathering place for learning. And this is in, in particular, it's important to acknowledge this um, today and always, uh, but specifically with the news that came out about yet more 
uh, burial grounds and uh, potentially not the remains of 93 more children at the Williams Lake Residential School. And so we take this commitment very seriously and we are doing our best to really understand what it means to decolonize our leadership practice and bring that awareness into the programs that we teach. So next slide now, please. I think this one is sort of a, a general statement about leadership programs. We can flip on to the next one as well. Thank you. Uh, so why study leadership? Well, I'd like to know from you why you'd like to study leadership. So perhaps if you just uh, have have any, you know, sort of general thoughts you'd like to add about that in the chat room, I'd really love to hear why you would like to study leadership. And then as it's mentioned here uh, on the slides, you know, there are a range of reasons why we think it's important to study leadership. Uh, you know, you can develop uh, your, your ability to lead teams, your ability for communication, for systems thinking, uh, to, to move change forward in a positive way in your organization, uh, to learn more about research and action-oriented inquiry, uh, to learn a little bit more about ethics and ethical leadership, ethical research, and then as mentioned, to honor the commitments of the Truth and Reconciliation Commitment, and over and above that, to take more of an intersectional lens. And what that means is acknowledging different kinds of power and privilege that are at play in structures in society and how this actually impacts our leadership. So all of these themes are embedded within each and every program that we offer in the School of Leadership Studies. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, within the Masters of Arts in Leadership, so the, the more multi-sectoral one that I mentioned, there are six competency areas. So personal mastery, learning, creativity and innovation, strategic and collaborative leadership, engaged inquiry. So not just documenting what's happening out there in the world, but actually engaging others to try to move change forward, uh, looking at systems change, and of course, looking at evidence-based scholarship. This is actually a really wonderful skill to develop throughout graduate uh, studies. And as we know, is very important in these COVID times to really understand evidence-based research and to be able to, to move our scholarship and our leadership forward based on that evidence. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, the Masters of Arts of Leadership, generally speaking, this is a two-year program with 36 credits. Um, during COVID, so for the last two years, we have been running it fully online just for the safety of everyone involved. So we haven't been coming to campus for the two two week residency periods. But moving forward, there are some signs of hope on the on the horizon. And we do hope that our summer residencies will again take place on this beautiful campus uh, for which Selena showed you uh, a number of beautiful photos. Um, so generally speaking, there's about a month of introductory coursework online and a platform called Moodle. And then you would come to campus for two weeks and go back onto the online environment for another year of coursework, come back again in your second year for your second two week residency, and then moved on to either a project or a thesis to complete your studies. Uh, embedded within this master's degree, there's also the option to complete either a diploma or a certificate. So you would choose one or the other. You wouldn't necessarily do all three of these. But let's say you wanted to start with the graduate certificate. You're not quite sure that you're committed to the master's yet. So you start with this graduate certificate and then you're in the same classroom. It's the same coursework in the same classroom with those master's students because it is a graduate level certificate, the admissions criteria criteria is the same. And those first three months, so the first three courses, the first nine credits are the same as the as the master's degree. So let's say you come to the end of the, that graduate certificate and you think, yeah, actually, I would like to continue on with the master's degree. Well, the good news is you're already enrolled 
uh, you know, we just have to fill out a little bit of paperwork to transfer you into the master's degree, but you're already enrolled with the same cohort, you're already in that learning community, and you already have a sense of what the workload entails. So that's how that work, it kind of, it kind of stacks in. Uh, the graduate diploma is another option. So again, you would take those first three courses, everyone together, and then you could make a choice. You could either take another, another graduate certificate elsewhere in the university, or let's say you're moving along in your master's degree and for one reason or another, uh, you decide that you do not want to finish it or you can't finish it if life happens, which it does sometimes, then we still have the option of offering you the graduate diploma so long as you have completed 18 graduate level courses. So that graduate certificate is nine credits and then another graduate certificate would be nine credits or maybe you've taken some of the other courses toward the master's degree. So those are the three multi-sectoral options. And I'm happy to answer more questions later if anyone has questions about how that stacking process works. Next slide, please. Uh, so again, this gives you a sense of, of how it works. The first term, like I said, is typically blended. So you would do that month online, then the residency, and then back online. That's what we mean by blended in this context. And then you go fully distance, so fully online, and then you come back for a blended two, the blended second residency term, followed by a project. Uh, if you choose the project option, there is one more course at the end that kind of wraps it all together and allows people to come back together to celebrate uh, the completion of their program. But some students do choose the thesis track, and that is, um, it's a longer process and it has, it's weighted slightly differently. It is 12 credits for that thesis course. And so you don't need to um, come back or you don't have the opportunity to come back together with your cohort. But some students by that point actually self-organize because they want to celebrate together with everyone. But the thesis students go off in one direction and the project students go off in the other direction. All right, next slide, please. So here uh, we, I'll say a few words about the health specialization. I did notice in the chat box that a couple of you are working in the healthcare sector. So this might be of interest to you. It's essentially the same coursework as that multi-sectoral master's degree, but all of the faculty have experience as health leaders working in the healthcare sector, and all of the other students in the program have that health leadership experience. And some of the readings are tailored, and the discussions, of course, just based on the nature of the cohort, the discussions and the readings are a bit more tailored to the health sector. And so the generalities of the coursework are the same, but the specialization means that you're surrounded by people who are working in the healthcare sector. So what I find, actually people ask me this question quite frequently, sometimes health leaders want to be in that you know, health specific sector, but sometimes they want to branch out a little bit and be surrounded by leaders who are in multiple sectors. So that's really a choice point for you. you. Just because you're a health leader, you're not required to go into the health specialization, but you certainly can. And health leadership experience is required in order to enter into the specialization. Uh, so thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, this just says a little bit more about the executive leadership spe specialization. So this is a new program that launched this year, but the foundations of it have been running for many years through our values-based leadership graduate certificate. So this is the program that I mentioned where there's a requirement that you have a certain number of years leading an organization at minimum at the director level, so usually mid to senior leaders of an organization. And it's very clear that the, the specific skills that are developed in this program are around organizational culture, how to develop the culture as an organizational leader, and actually how to move change forward as an organizational leader, and it, to some extent, how to ensure that any organizational innovations can actually stick because you've got the culture, you've got that foundation of culture within the organization that allow new innovations to be introduced and to actually stick around, uh, you know, because otherwise there's there's some suggestion that 
you know, you can introduce something new, but if the culture does not allow for it, it will simply be rejected. And so this is the program that allows you to learn some of those specific skills that organizational leaders need. Now, again, much like the health leadership specialization, if you are a mid or senior level leader in your organization, you're still welcome to apply for some of the other programs. The, the difference is you are required to have that cert those certain number of years of organizational leader experience leadership experience to enter into the executive leadership specialization or the values-based leadership graduate certificate that forms the first three courses of this specialization. So next slide, please. This shows you a little bit more about uh, the XL, we call it XL for short, the executive leadership specialization. So the first residency term, you take those two courses, BBLD 510 and 512, which are also the same first two courses as the values-based leadership certificate. Likewise, then you move from that blended term to a fully distance term, VBLD 514. That's a fully online course. And again, that will wrap up the graduate certificate in values-based leadership. So you're welcome to start there if that interests you. And then as you're in the program, if you think, yeah, actually, I'd like to continue, then you're already in that stream and you can already continue on with the uh, master's degree if you'd like to make that transfer once you're in the program. Uh, so then you have a number of different options here. Um, you can take three electives that are already offered within our School of Leadership Studies, or you can look further afield at options like a graduate certificate, uh, for example, in executive coaching, many students like to do, or some of the other graduate certificates that are offered at Royal Roads University. So you need those three electives from somewhere in the university, whether within our school or outside of our school. And then again, you're looking at that second residency term uh, with three courses where there's a residency as well. And then you wrap it up with a capstone project. And here, a thesis is an option, but we don't typically recommend the thesis because organizational leaders um, often, you know, the workload is such that they want to implement a project and then move on right away. And so typically people are choosing the project option, but if, if you would like, we can discuss a thesis option for you as well. So next slide, please. Here we're getting into our global leadership suite of programs. So on to the next slide. Why study global leadership? Um, I've, I'm seeing a couple of notes popping up in the chat and because I'm speaking right now, I won't read them in depth, but I will return to them in a moment. But some of you may be interested in global leadership. So I noticed there were students from Nigeria, from India, perhaps this global leadership suite of programs is what interests you, or maybe you're interested in one of the other programs I've spoken about so far. So again, there are certain requirements, you know, we do look to make sure that people have some kind kind of intercultural, international focus in their career to date and in their current work experience for this global leadership program. Again, you can look in more depth at the admissions criteria for each of the programs, but there's a, there's a need right now. Some would say that all leaders are global leaders these days because we are so deeply interconnected across the globe that our actions always have an impact, uh, a ripple effect around the world. We're certainly seeing that with COVID, COVID and we're certainly seeing that with uh, shipping delays and the supply chain issues. Of course, our, our world is so interconnected now that we know that all of our actions have a global impact. So next slide, please. Uh, here we have an overview of the Masters of Arts. So uh, there, there are a few different options. There's an, uh, uh, 13 months, so that's an expedited program, which means you're doubling up on a lot of coursework. Uh, if you are working full time, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that one because it really, really does take a lot of effort. But let's say you have a little bit more space in your schedule and you have the capacity to double up on your coursework and go through kind of in an express way, uh, then you might consider that 13 month expedited option. Or again, there's the 24 month, two year, that's our standard offering of master's degrees. And then likewise, we have two different options. There's the blended 
program where most of the work is online. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you would come in for those two week residency terms, you'd come to campus for those residencies. Again, with COVID, uh, we have been running everything online, but we are right now in the midst of offering a residency. We have students on campus and it is such a relief to start seeing people live and in person once more. So there's the, the, the blended option has mostly online, then you come to campus for the residencies only. And then we have the on-campus option of the master's degree. And that one you do, a, you still do a mix of online and on-campus learning, but you have more steady interactions with you, the rest of your on-campus cohort, but there still are opportunities to connect online with everyone else uh, in the blended program uh, who's joining online. So it's a bit of a hybrid uh, opportunity for you, but most of the coursework is on-campus. Again, there are two completion options. This time we're looking at a capstone project or an internship. And this is something new as well for people who are looking to broaden their international experience. We, we are working with our internship office to offer uh, global internships for master's students as well. And so much as I explained earlier with some of the other programs, embedded within those master's degree, there's also a graduate diploma, or a graduate certificate option. And so, like I said, with the earlier programs, let's say you just want to have a little taste to begin, see if this is really for you, you might enroll in the graduate certificate. This is five months. Um, you do uh, GBLD 501, which is the first online course. And then you move into GBLD 505, which is a blended course, which has some online and the, the two week residency in person. And then once that's done, you've completed the graduate certificate, you can graduate there, that may be enough for you. But let's say you decide that you'd like to continue with your cohort colleagues, you could move on to do the graduate diploma, or even the master's degree as well. So lots of options within the global suite of programs. And it's just so exciting, like I said, to actually see some students back on campus right now uh, who have come in from all around the world. It's really wonderful to see. All right, next slide, please. Uh, this one, you may need to, I'm noticing on my screen, the font is quite small. So maybe if you watch the recording later on, you can really zoom in to see here. But basically, it, it shows you what I explained earlier. So you've got the 501, then you've got 505, which is the first residency term. And then you have um, various options for the online or the on-campus courses, depending on which program you choose. And then you've got your second residency term. For those who are in the expedited version, the 13 month offering, you basically go, you jump from that first residency term into the second residency term. And then you look at the various elective courses that you're taking. So like I said, you might be doubling up some of that coursework and taking multiple courses at the same time. Uh, and then, like I said, there are two options at the very end there. There's the project option or the internship option. All right, next slide here. Now, this is very exciting. With our Global Leadership Program, one of the electives we've been able to off offer in the past, pre-COVID, uh, is a field trip. Uh, so previously, we went to Quito, Ecuador. You can see some of the beautiful photos here. And uh, last year, it was our hope to uh, work with one of our partnering organizations in India, and we had arranged an, uh, an Indian field trip but regrettably it was canceled, of course, due to the, the ongoing pandemic. However, what we did do is offer a virtual field study and we even got to have site visits in various community organizations. So it was a wonderful alternative to do it online, but of course not quite the same as actually having the opportunity to travel and to learn in country uh, with fellow students. So again, we, we try to uh, offer lots of options, especially during COVID, and we sincerely hope that we will next year be able to offer uh, the field trip once again. Next slide, please. Okay, I think at this point, I am going to take a look through the chat and answer any questions I can, and I'll pass it back over to you, Selena, for questions on how to apply. 
Thank you so much, Catherine. And we gave you a short bit of time to get through a lot of content. So thank you so much for allowing us a taste of all of the different programs within the School of Leadership Studies. Um, as this slide alludes to, we are now gonna head into talking about the admission and application process, but we are just around the corner from diving into a question and answer. So if you have any questions about anything Catherine chatted about with us, pop them in the chat box. This is the perfect time. Or if any questions arise around the admission requirements or application process, we have Alana and Rhonda with us who can help answer questions as well. So the chat box will be the place to be in a few slides here. This slide gives us a quick overview of the admission requirements for our MA, graduate diploma, and graduate certificates in leadership. So here at Railroads, we have two admission pathways. We have our standard admissions and flexible admissions. So for standard admissions, we require a four-year or comparable undergraduate degree from a recognized post-secondary institution with a resulting GPA of about a B plus. We then normally require a minimum of five years of leadership experience, though consideration is given to emerging leaders. So emerging leaders being those folks who you, you have an interest in becoming an organizational leader, or you, you are a leader, you are early in your career, you're perhaps around that two to three year mark, you foresee that growth happening. Please do apply as we really recognize the importance of our emerging leader sector as well. You notice we have flexible admissions. So at Rural Roads, we have the wonderful option of providing learners who may not have a traditional academic background, but who have been in the workforce for many, many years, gaining knowledge in that modality to apply that to their application process. So for example, flexible admissions are for those folks who may not meet the requirements of standard admissions, but have at least 10 years of professional experience with five of those being leadership related. I'll note that flexible admissions is something we assess on a case by case basis. So that means we wanna know you, we wanna talk to you and we wanna understand how our programs could be helpful to you. And we want you to understand that you will be so helpful to our programs. As we've talked about earlier, that cohort learning model is as spectacular as it is because we're able to blend worlds of learners who have that academic background together with learners who are coming from perhaps a primarily professional experience-based background. You'll notice under flexible admissions, we also have some text and a little bit of a smaller font. And that shares that applicants who are assessed under flexible admissions including those who may have the degree requirement checked off, but perhaps not that B plus GPA, will be required to take our academic writing and critical thinking course that we offer here at Rural Roads. That course will need to be completed before your program begins, and you'll need to achieve a B plus in that program, in that course. Um, that course is well loved here on our campus. Many, many of the programs at Rural Roads have similar requirements to this, so that course is offered um, once a month, if not more than once a month sometimes. And this course allows our learners who perhaps have been away from academic, uh, their last academic experience, there's been a, perhaps a significant duration of time since then, uh, learners who are new to the academic space, or those who are not required to take the course, but are electing to take the course, because they'd like to ensure that their academic writing is at a level that makes them feel comfortable before starting the program. This course ensures that we're setting you up for the greatest success as you enter the program. So things like, what is APA? How do I cite? How do I write this? Those aren't things you're thinking about while you're immersed in your studies. You'll notice here at the bottom of this slide, we have additional admission requirements for our specializations. So as Catherine shared, the different specializations will have different requirements for our learners. So if you were looking towards the health program, in addition to the requirements we've talked about, whether standard or flexible, we would require leadership experience having been in a healthcare organization 
or leadership in a health-related capacity. So again, coming back to Catherine sharing that all of the learners, faculty members, anyone associated with that health program comes from a healthcare background. Executive leadership being that designated organizational leader experience with responsibilities to lead others in delivering a common product or outcome with explicit values. So if we head to the next slide, here we're gonna just touch on the requirements for MA, graduate diploma, and graduate certificate in global leadership. So again, you see our standard admissions and our flexible admissions. So for standard admissions, we look for, again, a four-year or comparable undergraduate degree with a minimum GPA of a B. And then we're also gonna look for a minimum of three years of general leadership experience. Again, you see that asterisk there because what, across our school of leadership, when we say leadership experience, that definition can mean many, many things. So our leadership, while it includes um, the more uh, or stereotypical definitions of leadership, where it's, that's positional, your title says manager, director, um, things like that, it also includes components of leadership, such as, as we just mentioned, you know, leading others to a common goal, um, demonstrating an ability to work with others, lead others, support others. And that shows up in many different ways outside of that positional leadership sphere in a professional setting. So looking for folks who've exemplified leadership in volunteer settings, leadership in extraordinary uh, personal experiences. So in a, in a few slides, we'll talk about um, how you communicate those things to us. But in short, know that leadership experience, if you head to our website, we have a wonderfully broad definition of what it actually means to have had leadership experience. And then for our global leadership program, as Catherine mentioned, we require a demonstration of significant cross-cultural experience gained through work or travel. Flipping to our flexible admissions, it echoes um, what you saw for the MA leadership programs as well, where we look for professionals with at least 10 years of professional experience with three years of leadership experience. Though we do still require the demonstration of significant cross-cultural experience gained through travel and work and similar requirements of participating and completing our academic writing and critical thinking course. So Nancy, if you don't mind, let's take a swing to the next slide, because here we're going to talk about how you actually apply. So as with many things today, it begins with an online application. Once your online application is submitted alongside a fee of $128.81, we then look towards receiving some of your supporting documents. So supporting documents include things like official transcripts, personal statement, a structured resume, and two letters of reference. Our website, again, is a wonderful resource for looking towards what, what should be included in these different documents. How do I submit them to your offices? So for example, for official transcripts, official meaning that they do need to be received at our institution, seals to be considered official, Though in these COVID times, um, institutions are moving through official documents in different ways. So be sure to connect with your sending institution. So where you have done previous academic uh, work to understand how they're moving through submitting those documents right now. A personal statement. So this, this is where you're going to tell us, you know, why are you interested in this program? How can this program help support your future goals? What are you bringing to this program? This is what sometimes can be seen as, you know, maybe the most nerve wracking part of the, the application experience. But after writing this personal statement, our learners say, you know, that was awesome. That really helped me cement my commitment to leadership studies, for example, in this instance. Um, it really helps ground you into what you're getting into, what you're hoping to get out of it, but what you're going to put into it as well your structured resume. So this is where we get to learn a little bit more about you. Um, our website has some wonderful tips and tricks as to um, different things you should include within the structured resume to make sure all your accomplishments shine bright. 
and then two letters of reference. Again, our website helps outline who should your referees be and how can they send their letters to our office. So with that, let's talk about incoming intakes. We've talked about what the programs are, requirements to participate in the programs themselves, how you go about submitting yourselves to participate. Now, when does all this happen? When do you have to do it for? Well, we have a huge list here, so I'll just quickly cruise through that together. So if you are interested in any of our global leadership programs, so whether that be the Master of Arts, Graduate Diploma, Graduate Certificate, 13 month, 24 month, on campus, blended, anything associated with global leadership, October 3rd, 2022 is your date. So all of those programs in its different formations will begin October 3rd, 2022, which means your application deadline is July 3rd, 2022. Similarly, if you're looking for our MA, graduate diploma or graduate certificate in leadership, so that multi-sectoral offering, you're gonna begin June 6th, 2022, putting your application deadline in March, so March 7th, 2022. If you're interested in our MA Leadership Health Specialization, well, then you're going to begin in September. So that'll put your application deadline at June 19th, 2022. Leading our MA Leadership Executive Leadership Specialization to start April 17th, 2023. Putting your application deadline at January 17th, 2023. So. We can head to the next slide, but this incoming intake slide is a really great place for me to mention that here at Rural Roads, we do something called rolling admissions. So we're not gonna actually wait until that date noted for the application deadline to then look at everything that came in and said, okay, who's gonna get a seat? Instead, once your application or online application is in, as well as your supporting documents, we're able to adjudicate your file and let you know about your seat in the program. This is especially important for our leadership programs, which are quite popular on campus. Our leadership programs are some of our flagship programs here at Rural Roads University. So if there is an intake that you're particularly interested in, you know, I want to start MA Leadership Health in 2022, you can see that we have one health intake a year. So it would be important to make sure you get that online application in and your supporting documents in early so we can adjudicate your file and confirm your seat in the program. Thanks so much for flipping back to that, Nancy. <laughs> so financial aid, we get tons of questions as we should about financial aid. Financial planning is critical to the post-secondary planning um, as you look towards what graduate education could mean for you. So we have a wonderful financial aid and awards office here in our campus have their fingertips on resources available both internally at Rural Roads but externally as well. So if you have any questions about things like loans, uh, awards, research scholarships, bursaries, other types of funding, please connect with this office. We have their website here as well as their direct phone lines and as with many uh, institutions, this office is very underutilized. So if you're if you're considering uh, undertaking studies here at Rural Roads, it is very much worth your time to give them a call, check out the website, shoot them an email, just to see what there might be available for you. So with that, talking about people you should give a call, shoot an email, or check out the website, our enrollment services folks. So in the chat box, I am sure you have seen Rhonda and Alana many times sharing helpful links or answering any questions. And they are both beautiful examples of the team we have here on campus, eager to continue the conversation with you and help understand which program on our campus, whether in the School of Leadership or outside, is for you. So you can collect, connect with Rhonda and her team at learn.more at rollroads.ca. And if you're joining us from outside Canada, Alana and her team would be more than happy to help at learn.more.international at rollroads.ca. And if you ever want to connect with the School of Leadership Studies directly, you're more than welcome to at leadership.admin at rollroads.ca. 
So with that, I believe we have come to the end of our formal presentation today. Uh, we have a note here to check out our blog. The School of Leadership is wonderful in posting regularly on their blog to give folks an idea of you know, what's going on in the school. So through that blog, you are able to quickly see some areas of expertise of our faculty, capstones, theses, uh, theses other forms of research that our students are undertaking, um, expressions of what's happening in the world today, all all different topics that just give you a flavor of our School of Leadership Studies. So we'll be sure to include that link to the blog in our follow-up email as well. So Nancy, thank you so much for sharing the slides today. What we'll do is let's stop sharing the screen and let's pop to our chat box now. This has been such a an exploding place in today's session. So thank you all so, so much for doing that. Catherine, I'm just beginning my cruise through the chat box, but if there are any questions that you, you've already seen and you've provided an answer to, feel free to, to share them out loud as well. Sure thing. Yes, there were a number of questions and I I believe I was able to answer the one there. Like you said, it's a team approach. So <laughs> Alana and Rhonda and all of us are answering the questions there. But I believe I've been able to answer uh, some of the ones that are more nuanced about our programs. Uh, but I do see a question just came up from C.D. Uh, C.D. Hawkins. Uh, to asking asking about the certificate. So yes, absolutely. You can just take the certificates on their own. I was simply uh, expressing that it's possible to ladder them in to the master's degree down the road, but you're very welcome. They are standalone programs. So you would take the graduate certificate or the graduate diploma. Um, like I said, there's the, the multi-sectoral leadership um, options, there are the global leadership options, there's the values-based leadership options. You can, oh, in health leadership. Aha, okay, so no, that is one area where we do not have a certificate. So the, the certificates are only embedded in the, um, Basically, it's our summer offering of the Masters of Arts in Leadership, the multi-sectoral offering. Now, if you wanted to do, there, there could be a little bit of a roundabout way to do this, where you could uh, register for the, the full master's degree and then withdraw after the first three courses and get the certificate. So there's sort of a roundabout way to do that. Um, you know, we don't typically recommend it, but it is possible to, to do it that way. Uh, so if you wanted to send me a message, um, you know, maybe uh, maybe you could connect with Rhonda first, just to get a little bit of advice uh, on, you know, how what, what would be best suited for you. Uh, but you could either send me a message or maybe Rhonda, could I just ask one of my colleagues actually, could you put Cheryl Haycoop's email in the chat box. Cheryl Haycoops is the program head for the health specialization. So you could chat with her as well about how you know how you might go about uh, doing that. Okay, so I see there's another you're very welcome. I see there's another message from Emily. Um, I don't have the GPA requirements, but I want to apply for flex. Yes, you absolutely can apply for flexible admission. Uh, like Selena said at Royal Roads University, you know, we know we, we cater to adult learners. So we know uh, that a lot of stuff happens uh, sometimes in your undergraduate degree or, or other times in your life. Um, uh, this is a, a university and these are programs that are targeted at adult learners. So under the flexible admissions criteria, you would make the case for how you have that 10 years of related professional experience. And like Selena said, five of those years do need to meet the specific leadership criteria. And so um, I, I did see it posted on the chat a little bit earlier, but maybe somebody could just repost the link to the admissions criteria. And there are about six different bullet points there. So we will, we will let you know that, you know, here's what we consider to be leadership for the multi-sectoral 
uh, program. You know, it's leading people in this way, leading people in that way. So in your personal statement, you would make a case for how your um, experience that you have in your life so far, your professional experience does meet those five years of leadership experience, and then the larger 10 years of related professional experience that may or may not be in that leadership capacity. So that would be for flexible admission. And I see Alana has, um, has posted the link to that now. So take a look there. And like I said, we understand um, that GPA from earlier in life, <laughs> earlier in life doesn't always apply to where we currently are uh, right now in our professional careers. Okay. Yes, and, and Rhonda has mentioned about the executive leadership specialization. So for that one, it is still possible to apply under the flexible admissions criteria, but you really do need that organizational leadership experience. Like I said, that particular specialization is targeted for those mid to senior level leaders who are working within their organizations. So for, for the multi-sectoral program, we have a broader definition of leadership, like I said, with those six points, uh, and you could make the case for how your work uh, aligns with those six points. But for the executive leadership specialization, the next one that's coming up in the spring, uh, you know, you, you do need to make sure that you're showing, you're demonstrating that organizational leadership experience. And thank you, Anthony, you've put those definitions back in the chat. I appreciate that. So you see in Zoom how it becomes very interactive like this with everyone jumping in. Uh, now, are there any other questions or did the responses we, give, we gave in the chat fully respond um, to all of the questions that are out there? What I might do while folks are thinking up uh, either part two or part one of a new question, I might just quickly summarize some of the questions we've had answered in the chat box for those great, who are watching idea. the recording. So I'm just gonna swing up to the top here. We had um, Andre sharing again, uh, sim similarly to uh, when we got to meet him at the start of the session, but he's coming from a military background. And Catherine shared that Yes, given RU's history as being a military college prior to uh, becoming a public university, we have a number of students coming from military backgrounds. We have Rhonda sharing information about, so as we are hopefully continuing to move towards times when we're having our students back on campus with us, for those folks who are joining us for those short learning intensives, their residencies, we do have accommodation available on campus. So Rhonda has shared that single occupancy dorm rooms on campus can rent for approximately $45 a night, and that there would be your meals and travel costs to consider coming to our campus, but we do have a cafeteria on campus for meals on our within walking distance of grocery stores and restaurants. So if you're interested in staying on campus with us during your short-term stays, please connect with our offices and we can help. I'll share that though I live here in Victoria, when uh, I had the opportunity to participate in my residency, I did elect to stay on campus because much of my cohort was from outside of the area and they were choosing to stay on campus. So it allowed me to really fully immerse myself in the learning that was happening and go right from you know the end of class to dinner with my classmates to the library to do some group work and then to our lounge where everyone was in their pajamas with whatever beverage you were drinking and you were you're just hanging out really diving into what you learned that day and then you find your bed and you do it over again so um please do consider staying on our campus it's not a requirement though many folks um do choose to stay on campus which is quite cool so um, Anthony, is there any courses that offer opportunity for employment slash work in Canada after graduation? And Catherine shared that yes, our global leadership program does have the internship opportunity, which allows learners to have that global work experience component uh, embedded within their program. And then shared that Dr. Wander Kraus is the program head for our global leadership program. So if you have any questions about that specifically, you'd like to learn more, you can always connect with her at wanda.wandkraus at rollroads.ca. Doing a quick cruise through, 
we had some folks share a little bit about their background, what they're hoping to learn here at Rural Roads, and Catherine highlighted that there's a range of options available here at Rural Roads, both within the School of Leadership Studies or within all of the other schools we have here as well. And what's wonderful is folks like Rhonda and Alana, they can speak to all of the programs we have here at Rural Roads. So they'll be able to tell you more about what could be a good fit for you, depending on what your long-term goals are. Rhonda shared a link to the financial aid blog. That's been really helpful for folks to, to get a more, uh, a quick snapshot into the different ways our financial aid office has been able to help uh, our learners. And then of course, Catherine kindly answered our question around the uh, certificate in leadership studies. We have, um, oh, Andre sharing. A big thank you for our time and answers and that he's hoping to submit his application soon. Oh, exciting. And then we had Asinda asking, is there an MA executive leadership course starting in 2022? Absolutely, we're actually just around the corner. So if you're looking to do the Master of Arts in Leadership with the Executive, Spe executive Leadership Specialization, you can begin in April 18th of this year. That'll put your application deadline at March 18th, 2022. So get that online application in. That'll let us know you're interested and connect with us because we'd be more than happy to help along the way. Nalana shared a good comment here as well that we recommend our international applicants submit their completed applications and supporting documents six months before the program start date to ensure that you have enough time for your application to process and also enough time to apply for and receive a study permit as well. Alana and her team, uh, they're well equipped with the different requirements uh, of folks joining us from countries all across the world. So if you're, in, if you're you know, wanting to learn more about what you need to join us from where you're currently located, connect with Alana and her team, absolutely. And then Kristen, would the global leadership have a community development focus? Catherine, I'll turn it over to you. Well, Selena, I was just about to say you could speak about that, given that you have just completed the program, uh, a lot of the coursework there. Um, but yes, it, yes, uh, the way the program was designed, initially we sort of had two streams. One was more of organizational leadership focus and the other was more community development focus. So that was embedded right from the beginning, Kristen. Um, as the program has evolved over the years, we, we learned that students, their work wasn't so clear cut. It didn't so easily fall into one area or the other. So now that's one of the broader themes that runs throughout the whole program. And you'll get little, uh, you know, elements of, of other themes as well. And then, of course, the electives that you choose allow you to tailor how you want to focus your, your degree in global leadership. And perhaps maybe just while I'm, I'm speaking here, I see that Elle has asked a question about the health leadership courses, starting them before September of 2022. Again, there are ways to do this. You know, there are sort of roundabout ways to start your coursework in advance. So you could take one of the electives maybe in advance, or you could take um, uh, one of the online courses in advance. But then what happens, Elle, is that you're left with this big gap in your program while the rest of the member of, members of your cohort are going through those courses that you've already taken. So if you only, you know, if you want to be in that health leadership specialization, our recommendation is that you go through the way the program schedule is designed. However, um, you're asking the question for a reason, I would assume, you know, there's probably something happening in your schedule uh, that makes you want to um, start a little bit earlier. So again, I would suggest reaching out to either Cheryl Haykoop, who is the program head, and we had posted her email address earlier. Maybe somebody could post her address again, but then also the general learn more email account. If, if somebody, uh, Alana has just posted the learn more international, but if Rhonda, if you could just um, post the general learn more email address. Uh, and by speaking with one of our enrollment advisors, they'll get a better sense of what your specific circumstances are and why you're asking the question. And then we'll help you to build a program around that that makes sense for you. Thanks, Rhonda and Selena. 
Okay, now any other questions? I see we're right at 101, so uh, perhaps um, not seeing any questions popping up in the chat, what I would suggest we do is again just reiterate connect with Rhonda, learn.more at royalroads.ca, or if you're an international student, collect, connect with Alana, learn.more.international at royalroads.ca, and we can certainly um, answer any other questions you have, or they will direct you to the right person to answer the questions. And also, Selena will be sending this recording out to all of you afterwards. And so you can rewatch if there was something that didn't quite make sense, you want to listen to it again or take a look at the slide or take a look at our website that actually has a lot of this information online as well. I suggest we wrap it up now since we're at one o'clock. Uh, and uh, like Alana is saying in the chat, a big thank you to all of you for joining us. Thank you for those of us, those of you who will be watching the recording later. And thank you to Selena and Rhonda and Alana and everyone. Uh, sorry if I've forgotten someone, Nancy, uh, everyone who made this webinar possible. It's great to be here with you today. I'll take my leave now and say goodbye. Thanks so much, Catherine. Bye-bye, everyone.